Welcome back. In this video, we'll continue looking at the LAMPS input file. In the previous video, we covered some of the commands that we needed to set up LAMPS. To initialize, to create some variables, uh, to create some atoms, and to define the interatomic potential, as well as tell LAMPS to calculate some special quantities for us. In this video, we'll move on and cover some of the commands that we need to actually run a simulation starting with what it takes to actually assign a temperature to our atoms. So what we want to accomplish here is actually compress our crystalline material while there's a temperature um, in the atoms. And at the molecular dynamics scale, a temperature is really just a vibration, a random vibration on each atom. And so we'll do that by creating a random vibration. And then we'll let the cell relax um, so that it doesn't have any stress, and then we'll actually de deform it and calculate the strain and the stress in that deformation. So let's get started. First of all, in basically every simulation step, we'll reset the time step to zero. And this just makes sure that in our outputs, our time step will start at zero. Next, we actually want, we want to specify how long our time step is. In this case, we'll use 5 femtoseconds. This can change depending on your material. In general, the lighter the atom, the smaller the time step you need, as those thermal vibrations will happen at a higher frequency. Next, we'll actually create the temperature. And as I mentioned, temperature is a velocity. It's a vibration. And so we'll do that using a velocity command. So here's how it works. We'll say velocity and we'll apply it to all the atoms, and we're going to create. Um, and this will create a random velocity in all the atoms. And we're going to create it at a magnitude of 300, and this means 300 Kelvin. And then we'll give this command a random number. Now this random seed is important because we want to be able to run this uh, input script and have it be able to run it multiple times and have it give us the same answers. And so if we keep the same seed, then the random velocities that it assigns are all the same, and so we can get the same answer out of it at the end. Or we may want to change this number and see what effect that random starting velocity has on the results. Next, we want to assign the fixes, or the boundary conditions. In this case, we're just relaxing it, so the only boundary conditions we need are a zero pressure and a fixed temperature. And so here's how we do it. We say, let's create a fix. We're going to call this one fix1, one, and we're going to apply it to all the atoms. Now this will be a NPT fix. In other words, a constant number of atoms, a constant pressure, and a constant temperature. And we'll assign our constant temperature to be 300. 300 at the start, 300 at the finish and we'll assign our pressure to be zero at the start and zero at the finish. And we use this ISO command because we want the pressure to be zero in every direction. So it's an isobaric uh, pressure. Now these other numbers that you see here are related to uh, damping unwanted vibrations. So this would be related to uh, temperature swings up and down or something like that. And we want to keep our temperature smooth and so we put in this damping parameter. And you can look in the documentation for recommended values of, the, of those damping parameters. So that's all we need for boundary conditions. We've created a temperature, we've created a boundary condition, but now we need to tell LAMPS what information uh, we want it to output. Now there are two ways we're going to look at it here. First, we're going to look at the global output, and we're going to use the thermo output. This thermo output will print to the command line after you start the simulation so that you can have a good idea that your simulation is running properly. So we'll tell it to print this output every 400 time steps. And we'll use this thermo style custom to specify what we want it to print. And we'll say print out the time step the cell size, and the pressures, as well as the potential energy and the temperature. And this will just give us a good idea that everything is working right. But we also want to get more detailed information. We want to see some of the 
uh, quantities that are per atom. And so we'll use the dump command for that. So we'll create a dump and we'll call it number one and we're going to dump all of the atoms and we're going to use this custom style so that we can specify some things. And we're going to dump every 250 time steps into this file here. Now this star here at the end it simply means that a new file will be created for every time step that is output. So we'll have a 0, we'll have a 250, we'll have a 500, etc. Everything after this point is simply one of the quantities that we want lamps to output. So we want the atom ID, we want the positions, and we want this C underscore per atom. This is actually referring to the compute that we defined earlier. So if you look back up here, this per atom compute, that's what this is referring to. The C underscore tells lamps that we want to use the compute called per atom. And so we want to print the potential energy per atom. Uh, we want to print each atom's potential energy in this file. Finally, we also want to uh, print the forces. We also are going to print the stresses. And just for visualization, or for visual sake, this ampersand tells lamps that the next line is a continuation of this line. So all of this is on the same line uh, in lamps, as far as lamps knows. And you can see we're going to output another compute, this virial compute. But this one is a little bit different. In this case, this compute has six different components because it's a stress tensor. So there are six individual components. So we need to tell lamps that we want it to dump every single one of these. So we'll do one, two, three, etc. And we'll dump all of them into this dump file. And with that, we've set up the output as well. And so we're ready to run. And that simply is done by doing run and the number of time steps. And we're going to run it for 4,000 time steps. After we're finished running, we'll simply unfix and undump so that these fixes and dumps that we've defined don't carry on into the next simulation step. At the end of all of this, we want to store the cell length because we want to calculate the strain, but that cell length may have changed from the beginning, so we need to store whatever it is after it's been relaxed. And you see we have to use two different variables to do that. That's because this first variable will equal LX at every time step. In other words, it'll be updated every time step so that it is always equal to LX, which changes. But here we're saying that I just want to take the variable of that temp and set it uh, and store it in this L0. And now this will be a constant number and we can use it to calculate the strain. Okay, now we can move on to our deformation step. Again, we'll reset the time step to zero so that our output files start at zero, and we'll set up our boundary conditions. We'll use the NPT thermostat again, so constant number, constant pressure, constant temperature, with one change. The pressure will only, uh, will only constrain the pressure on the Y and Z faces. And the reason for this is that we're going to specify the deformation on the x face, and so we just we can't specify both the pressure and the deformation. And we'll use what's called a fixed deform for that deformation. So again, we create a fix. This time we're going to call it number two, and we're going to apply it to all the atoms again, and we're going to deform. So we'll apply this deformation every time step, and in the x direction, this deformation will be done by an engineering strain rate um, that is equal to that. So, in other words, every time step, that box will be uh, that box will be strained so that uh, this time this strain rate is achieved. It'll be strained by just enough. It'll be reshaped uh, so by just enough so that we get this this constant engineering strain rate, and that should be negative for compression. Okay, so that, those are the two boundary conditions we need for the deformation step. We also want to store the stress and strain, like I mentioned before. And so what we'll do is we'll calculate the strain with that initial box length that we stored up here. But you see I'm using, using something uh, interesting here. So I'm using, I'm setting this variable equal to this equation. 
And inside the equation, I'm using this v underscore l0 instead of what we've, what we've seen in the past. So inside a function or an equation, and we specify those with, with these quotes, we need to use this v underscore, similar to the compute style where we, re, we, where we were using this c underscore. So this will allow us to calculate the strain. Then we're going to store the strain and the pressures in four different variables. And we're going to print those to a file. And we'll do that with something called a fix print. So again, we set up a fix, we give it a name, we're going to do it for all the atoms, and we're going to print every 100 time steps. And we're going to print this string here. And you can see it's taking the variable of our four variables that we've set up, the value of those four variables, and printing them to the file. And we're going to print it to the file name that we've given here. So with these, we'll be able to easily see the uh, stress in each direction and the strain that's creating that stress. Similar as before, we're going to set up the dump the only difference being that we're going to change the name and we're going to set up the thermo. Uh, the only difference here is that we're going to ask it, ask lamps to output uh, the strain in this thermo command as well. So you can actually specify these variables using the v underscore method in the thermo style command. Finally, we can run the simulation. So it will run it for 4,000 time steps and you'll have, after that, it'll be done. And with that, we've stepped through the LAMPS input deck for a uniaxial compression of copper.